Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, I am gonna show you how to make a very easy and delicious beef stew in the Ninja Foodi. I'm using the six and a half quart Ninja Foodi, um, but you could use the eight quart as well. And this is the pressure cooker with air crisper. I feel like I now have to uh, qualify that because there's a bunch of Ninja Foodi products now. So this is the pressure cooker with the air crisper. So ordinarily, what I, how I make my beef stew is with leftover pot roast. And if you haven't seen my pot roast video yet, I will link to that right up there so you can check that out. But that pot roast was so good, we didn't have any leftovers. And then I was craving beef stew. So I had to just make some from scratch and I'm gonna show you how it's super easy. So you wanna get a container that's going to hold our flour and seasoning mixture. And I just happen to use these because they come with a lid and so I can actually just shake it up with the meat in there and it's quick and easy. You could use a bag as well. Anything that will hold the flour and then hold the meat. So what we're gonna do is put in one half of a cup of all-purpose flour into our container. And then I have a seasoning blend. Now you guys can do whatever you want as far as seasonings go, but I found this is a really simple blend and it absolutely tastes delicious. I have two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of thyme, and one teaspoon of, of black pepper, and that's it. So I'm gonna put those in there, make sure I get all that salt out. Um, it might seem like a lot of salt, but we're gonna make a full pot of stew here. So really, for the amount of servings, it's not a lot of salt. All right, so let me just get this mixed up, and I think I'll just do it with this thing here. This is my, I think, my most used kitchen tool. It's called the scoop and spread, and really it's designed to make sandwiches, but I, I don't eat sandwiches, so I don't use it for that, but I use it for just about everything else. You're gonna see how I use this side of it, because it's a double-sided tool. Um, you'll see how I use this side of it, which is a little bit firmer um, when we deglaze the pot. All right, so now that's mixed up, and now we wanna get our meat ready. Now you could buy the pre-prepared stew meat, there's nothing wrong with that, but I find that it is just as easy to get a chuck roast, or you could use a sirloin, or whatever meat you prefer, um, and cut it up yourself. I just find that it's easy, I can manage the size, I can trim it up if I want, so that's what I have here. It's about two pounds. You could make this with one pound of beef, or two pounds of beef, but I would not go over the two pounds because what's gonna happen is we're gonna have too much flour, it's gonna become too thick, too fast, and then we might get that water notice. So two pounds or one pound of beef, it's fine. I made it the first time with one pound of beef. I thought it was great. I wanted to keep it that way, but my husband said, nope, you need more beef. So I'm gonna double it now, all right. So I'm just gonna take a knife that's pretty sharp and cut these pieces. I'm not gonna do a lot of trimming with this because that fat is actually going to help make our gravy and it's also gonna help flavor the beef stew. So I'm not gonna do a lot of trimming. But when I get down into here, I probably will cut this one little um, big area of fat out. So while I finish doing this, because this doesn't take any time at all, and I, to make them into bite-sized pieces. So they're about maybe a one inch cube. That's what I would suggest to do. Um, if they're a little bit bigger, that won't matter. But you don't wanna make them too small because you don't want them, you want you want to have a nice piece of beef when you uh, bite into it. And if you come across anything that's kind of tough on your meat, just go ahead and cut that out. Now, the 20 minutes of pressure cooking that we do for the beef will tenderize it quite a bit, but if it's really stringy and tough, I kind of just pull that out. And a good idea while you're chopping up your meat and getting it dredged in the seasoning blend and the flour is to go ahead and start preheating your Ninja Foodi. I'm not gonna do it quite yet. I'm gonna do it when I'm about halfway done cutting this meat. And then I'm gonna add in the olive oil and we're gonna let it get super hot because we're going to saute the beef after we put it in the flour mixture. So when I get about halfway done, I'm gonna preheat that. So if your meat's already cut up and you don't have to do this step, then you could preheat, of course, right now. All 
All right, so now's a good time to get the Ninja Foodi preheated. So we're gonna turn it on, the sear saute high is what we want, and hit the start button. That's one of those things I often forget to do, so make sure you hit the start button because it will not start to heat up unless you do. And I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons of olive oil. Now, you might need a little bit more, it just depends, but I'm gonna start with two, then I can add more as I'm sauteing the beef after we put it in the flour mixture. So. Let's start doing that. All I'm gonna do is just put the beef right in here. I might have to do this in two batches. Um, and you know what I'm gonna do actually, and I think that this is probably a really smart thing to do. We are going to use half of the meat that we're gonna dredge in the flour, but the other I'm not gonna dredge in the flour. And the reason I'm doing that is because remember, I tested the recipe with one pound of beef, but my husband really wanted me to double the meat in here, so I'm doing that now. But what if that much flour for the double meat thickens too fast? So I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna use about half of the meat, put it in the flour, saute it, and then this I'm not gonna dredge in the flour. It's not gonna make any difference in the final outcome, but it will give us less of a chance to get that water notice. All right, so let's get the lid on and let's do a little shake. Well, this is pretty full, so we'll see if I can coat it, but it looks like it's coating all the beef just fine. All right, now you will have leftover flour. That is fine. Save it though, don't discard it. We're gonna add it in at the end to really thicken our beef stew. All right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw these in. And I'm not, like I'm gonna kind of let the flour fall off of them too, so I'm not putting in a ton of flour right now. Just because, you know, you have to have a thin liquid to come to pressure. So if this becomes too thick too fast, we're gonna have some problems coming up under pressure or during the pressure cooking time. All right, that looks pretty good. And then we have a good amount of flour, probably about a quarter cup or so left here in the um, bowl. And again, we're gonna save that because we're gonna do a little trick at the end to get this mixed up and into our um, beef stew to make it really thick. All right, now I know my hands are kind of covered, but let me just finish this up real quick and then I'll give them a quick wash and we will get to stirring the beef cubes and this takes about 10 minutes or so, um, cause you wanna get them nice and brown on all the sides. That's helping to develop flavor. So it is not a step that I suggest you skip. Um, everything that we do here is to develop flavor and make the end result perfection. And this was the be best beef stew I've ever had. I was amazed, I mean really amazed. I was kind of afraid to test it, honestly, because I thought, how am I going to make beef stew without getting the water notice, you know? Um, but it worked. this works perfectly, so. Famous last words. Now watch me get the water notice while I'm doing a video. That'll be funny. But that'll be okay, because that's real life, and then we'll just roll with it. But I hope not. It smells so good. Now this is that piece of just pure um, fat there and I'm not gonna put that in. So I'm just gonna cut away the meat that I can get and not worry about that. Now you could cook this up and for the dogs or you could use it, you could put it in the freezer. This would be great to add if you're gonna make homemade beef stock. So you could always save your trimmings and use it when you wanna make some beef stock. Which I have not done yet and I really need to do that. I need to get some bones from the from the butcher and make some homemade beef stock because that would be incredible and easy in the Ninja Foodi. All 
All right, that looks good enough. Now let me go ahead and get this cleaned up. I'm not gonna stir yet. I'm gonna wash my hands, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna flip those around and let them brown on the other side. All right, so it's time to give these a little flip. I mean, I cannot even begin to tell you how good it smells. Oh my gosh. It's just amazing. And it's browning up nicely, but we're not quite ready. Now, you'll notice that on the bottom, there is um, you know, some flour and stuff that's kind of sticking. Don't worry about that. We're going to get that off when we deglaze. So right now, just let that beef sit for another three to five minutes until it browns up nicely, and then we'll deglaze the pot and we'll use the other side, and I'll show you how to, a good trick for getting all that off the bottom. All right, so I'm going to just give it another little flip. Oh, it looks so good. So just brown it until you no longer see any pink. And then, you know, if some of them are still pink, it's not the end of the world. Do not worry about it. I think I'm just going to let this go maybe another minute. But you can see the really nice browning that you get. And this is what develops the flavor. So you do want to take this, the time to do this step. It is important. All right, so while that's finishing up browning, I'm gonna go ahead and prep um, one onion. Now I have three here. These are kind of small onions, so I would say the recipe would be two large onions or three small onions, um, or no onions if you don't like onions, that's perfectly fine. What I'm gonna do is put one onion in when we pressure cook the beef, and then the other two are gonna go in when I put the vegetables in because I like a little bit of texture on my onion. I don't want them to just kind of fall apart and disappear. I wanna know that they're in my stew, so I'm gonna wait and add the other two. But this one's gonna go in because it's gonna help flavor the broth from the beginning. And the thing about a beef stew that I absolutely love is the ease of the prep because there's really nothing to it. We don't have to do a fine dice. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend doing a fine dice when you're making a beef stew. So I just take my onion, cut it in half, get both ends off, peel the paper off, and just go down the center like that and then make chunks. And that's it. And I can throw that in right now as well. Then the other thing we're going to add in right now before we go under pressure cook is some minced garlic. So I'm going to go ahead and mince up about six to eight cloves of minced garlic. You can use as much or as little or none as you like. And that's going to be it. We'll deglaze the pot with some wine. That really adds a nice depth of flavor, but it is optional. You can use all beef stock in this recipe if you prefer. So let me get my little handy dandy garlic mincer here. It looks like we're just just about ready. So this will be perfect timing. And then while the beef is pressure cooking for the 20 minutes, we will prep the rest of the ingredients. So they're all ready to go in the pot. So this is a pretty quick and easy stew. The other thing that I like is that it comes up to pressure fairly quickly the first time because everything is going to be really hot in the pot. So there's really no um, time. I think it took like five minutes during the test. So it'll take somewhere, I guess, between, let's say, five and ten minutes to come up to pressure. Oh, I wish you guys could smell what is coming out of that pot. Oh, my gosh, it is so good. I cannot wait to eat this. And you know what else I decided to do? And this is kind of one of those times where I haven't tested this recipe. I have no idea if it'll work, but I think it's going to be fun. Is we're going to make some drop biscuits and we're going to put them right on top of the beef stew at the very end and let those cook. And I don't mean in the stew. I mean on top on a rack. So we're going to see if we can do that. And I'll, I'll do that just off the cuff here for you guys. We'll see if we can make some drop biscuits. I think that'll be fun. All right. So now those garlic cloves went in. I'm going to give one final stir. This is when I'm going to flip this utensil over and use the um, end that is less flexible because it's going to help us to scrape any of the, that flour and flavor because there's a lot of flavor there. Uh, that Scrape that off so that we don't trigger the water notice. So the first thing I'm going to deglaze with is the one cup of wine. The reason why I put the wine in first is because I want it to have a chance to burn off the alcohol. I love cooking with wine and I love the complexity of flavor that it brings, but I don't like my food to taste like alcohol. So I definitely want to spend a couple of minutes burning that off. 
So I'm gonna pour it in. And immediately things will start to like bubble and uh, the wine will heat up. And then as it gets on the bottom, it helps to loosen all those brown bits or fond is what it's called. And I call them little bits of yumminess because that's what they are. And you'll see the wine thickening up pretty quickly. And that's because it's also combining with the flour down there and it's creating a little thick sauce, which is fine because we're gonna thin it out with the beef stock. Now, if you like to make your, um, your beef stew with those packets um, that come from the store, be very careful when using those because they thicken up very quickly when you go under pressure and you are likely to get the burn notice. So I definitely use caution when you're using those and making beef stew. So this little end perfectly scrapes the bottom without scratching, without scratching, and gets all the brown bits. And you don't need to be able to see them because you can feel them as you're scraping along. You can feel what, where they are. And I think I've gotten them all off and it looks good. All right. So let me just put in the final couple of ingredients. We're gonna thin this out with two cups of beef stock. And I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Now, the first time I tested the recipe, I did a quarter of a cup. I happen to like it, but it was a little tangy. You could like, I don't know, just taste a little tang from, from the sauce. So I'm coming back on it to two tablespoons, but if you like that tang, add a quarter cup. It was delicious, but just a little much. So we're gonna add in two tablespoons. And that is it, guys. I'm gonna give it one last stir here just to make sure that it looks like it's a thin enough liquid, and it does. So everything looks good. Now, we are gonna go under high pressure for 20 minutes, and then we're gonna do an immediate release. And don't freak out, I'll explain why, why an immediate release is perfectly fine, even though this is a beef stew. All right, let's go to High pressure, the time is gonna be 20 minutes. And hit start. Make sure the black valve on the back is set to seal. And then we expect it to take somewhere between five and 10 minutes to come up to pressure. So I know people are so convinced that anytime they cook meat, they need to do a natural release. And, and I'm, I'm all for that, I get that, I understand it. It's because when you release the pressure immediately, it sucks the moisture out of the meat. However, we can do an immediate release on this beef stew or any other types of uh, submerged meats and any kind of soups that have meat in them because we're not gonna change the pressure in the stew itself, okay? So we're gonna release the pressure, but the heat is gonna stay the same. So we're not gonna have that quick pulling out of moisture in the meat that's submerged in the liquid. Now, one thing that I have heard, and I haven't done this personally, but I have heard, so I wanna give you this tip, is if you do an immediate release because you have a piece of meat that is submerged in the liquid, don't remove it from the liquid right away. Let it sit in the pot for about five or 10 minutes. Um, and that way you won't, pull the moisture out. But this one's gonna be fine to do an immediate release, so trust me on that. And then we will get all of our vegetables chopped up and ready to go so that when we immediately release this, we're ready to dump and go back under pressure for two minutes. It hasn't started counting down yet, but the pin has popped up, so we are under pressure. And literally, that took like three minutes or so. So it's super fast. Um, and then it'll go under pressure once the countdown starts. That's when I say, when I put in my recipes the time to pressure, I don't mean the time for the pin to pop up. I mean the time it takes until the countdown starts. So I would expect that's gonna start in a few minutes. So while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the other ingredients. And what I'm using for my beef stew is one pound of carrots, two more onions, a pound of potatoes, and probably somewhere between, I don't know, four and eight ounces of mushrooms. I'm not worried about the measurements. Um, so that's, the, that's all the ingredients that are gonna go in here. Now you could add in or omit any of these or more, whatever you like. Some people like a can of tomatoes or tomatoes in their beef stew. Go ahead, you could add that in really before you went under pressure. All right, so I'm just gonna peel these up. All 
I don't think I've ever seen that before. It looks like I've got a bruise on my carrot. I don't think I've ever seen a dark spot on a carrot like that. It's interesting. I probably cut it out. Hmm. That is really interesting. started. See how fast that is? All right, let me move these out of the way. I'm going to put those uh, in our container for compost, and then we'll get the rest of the vegetables prepared. All right, so like I said, I'm using about a pound. I mean, you could use a pound and a half. It's, it's no, no right or wrong amount of potatoes to add, however many you want. And I got the Yukon Gold. I like the way that they hold up better. The texture to me is better, but you could use russets. They're just gonna be a little bit softer and a little starchier. But since we're adding them in at the end and only pressure cooking for two minutes, it's not gonna make a difference. So I'm not even gonna peel these. That's one of the reasons why I also like to use the Yukon Gold or Golden Potatoes as they're um, otherwise called at the grocery store if you can't find the Yukon Gold. You don't need to peel them. The skin is so thin that you don't need to peel them. So these have been washed and then what I'm doing is, <laughs> These, my husband went to the grocery store for me this time, and I don't know, he couldn't find the potatoes that I usually get, so he got the, a different brand, and they are just full of those little eyes. So I'm gonna just kinda get those off. They're, they're quite ugly potatoes, to be honest, but you know what, they're gonna taste fine. I threw you under the bus, Jeff. <laughs> All right, that looks good. Get those out of the way. And now I am going to take the mushrooms again. Like I said, I'm not going to measure them or anything like that. It doesn't really matter. So just as many as I think I want. It's totally optional, but... I really like mushrooms in my beef stew. That looks like plenty, plenty. Now, when you're preparing mushrooms for anything, anytime you wanna cook with mushrooms, don't wash them under running water because they're like a sponge and they will absorb that water and then there's no room for them to absorb the delicious liquid or if, like if you're doing a garlic butter, they won't absorb it because they've already absorbed the water. So you just want to gently brush them with a damp towel, not super wet, but just lightly damp. And just get off any kind of dirt that you can see. I pop out the stems, you can use the stems, but I usually just remove them. And then for this, I'm just going to take them and quarter them. And that will be a good size uh, for our beef stew. So I'm gonna finish doing that with all of the mushrooms and then I will cut up the rest of the vegetables. All right, so we just have about a minute left and then we're gonna do that immediate release. So I just wanted to talk about the size of the vegetables here. So what I have done is cut the vegetables into about one inch pieces. And that is because we're gonna go under pressure for two minutes and I want them to be cooked, obviously. If you wanted to go under pressure a little bit longer because you wanted chunkier uh, bits of carrot or whatever, you can do that. So if you wanted to make these thicker because that's how you like them in your beef stew, that's fine. Just bump up the time from two minutes to maybe three or four minutes. Um, but for this dice, which is about, like I said, about an inch, they are gonna be fine in two minutes. Plus we're gonna let it thicken a little bit. So, you know, even while it's just sitting there thickening, it's still cooking and finishing them up. So this has worked each and every time for me and I'm sure it'll work for you as well. Now there's gonna be quite a bit of steam coming out. So the um, re pressure release time is gonna be probably a couple of minutes because it's a full pot and there's a lot of steam in there. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and flip that and let the pressure release. All right, so it didn't take that long, about two minutes and now the um, red button has depressed and we can go ahead and take off the lid. Now when you do that, always do that away from you because there is, I mean steam is very hot and it can burn you. So I do that away from me and then put the lid down here. 
This looks and smells amazing. So let's give it, it looks real soupy, so don't worry about that. We're gonna fix that up in just a little bit. But the smell is amazing. All right, so now I'm gonna get all of these uh, vegetables in here, and you'll see the volume of the pot. Now, the second time to pressure takes a little bit longer because we're adding in these vegetables and cooling down the liquid. If you weren't quite ready to add your vegetables, let's say you got behind on your prep and they weren't ready to go, turn on the sear saute, maybe on medium, so that you can get a nice little simmer of your liquid um, as you're finishing up your vegetables, and that is going to help it come up to pressure a little quicker. But the two minute pressure cook that I set, it does take into account that it takes probably about 10 to 15 minutes to come up to pressure this next time. But that's fine because it's gonna give us time to make up our dough for our drop biscuits. All right, I'm just gonna give this a nice little stir. Looks good. Now we might need to add in some more beef stock, but that's okay, we can do that even after the pressure cook time. Um, just because the volume of meat I doubled, so we probably need to go another cup to two cups of beef stock so that we have a good um, you know, sauce to vegetable and meat ratio. All right, so put on the pressure lid and go ahead and go back to the high pressure and the time is gonna be two minutes. Hit start, make sure your valve is to the seal position again, and let the Ninja Foodie do its thing. All right, so we just started the countdown um, about 30 seconds ago, and the red pin popped up quite a bit before the timer started counting down. So I would say this took a good 15 to 20 minutes um, to come all the way up to pressure and start the countdown. So just don't be concerned about that. It does take a while, it's a really full pot. So in the meantime, I went ahead and I got some ingredients together for me to make Biscuits. Now, this is not my famous recipe for biscuits that I will link to up there because those are actually formed biscuits that you cut with a biscuit cutter and then bake in the Ninja Foodie. They're absolutely delicious, but this time we're gonna make more of a drop biscuit and I'm totally winging it. In fact, I've never even made drop biscuits before, so we're gonna just do this together and let's see if I get the ratios right because I'm totally making this up as I go along. I have one cup of flour in here and I'm gonna add in uh, about quarter cup, three tablespoons to four tablespoons of butter that's cold and salted. And then I'm just gonna use a pastry cutter here to just cut that in and make the little crumbles in the flour. I'm not even sure if this is the traditional way that you make a drop biscuit. Um, it is when you make your rolled biscuits that you do with the biscuit cutter, but I'm not really sure, because again, I've never made them. So I'm winging it and it's all right, it's gonna be fine. And it might not even work, you know, because I haven't tested this or anything. But we're going to give it a shot because I like biscuits with my beef stew. All right, that looks really good. And it's time now to do an immediate release on our beef stew. So that's pretty good timing. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that and let it release will take a couple minutes and then we will remove the lid. All right, that's finishing up. It's gonna happen, uh, the pin's gonna drop any minute now. So what I'm gonna do is kind of switch gears a little bit. Just move my um, biscuit making stuff down here for a second because we wanna go ahead and get this flour slurry um, put in to start to thicken that stew up. Because right now, it's not really the consistency of stew, it's more the consistency of a soup and we need to take care of that. The reason why we can't do this earlier on is because it would be too thick and you might get the water notice. So we're gonna do it right now. So the pin dropped, I'm gonna go ahead and open the lid. Do that away from you. And give this a stir so you can just see that it's pretty thin and we don't want that. We want a nice thick stew. What we can also see is now that the vegetables have cooked, it looks like we have a good amount of broth in there. It might just need maybe another half a cup or so. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a ladle here and I'm gonna ladle out some of this broth. Now, if you get a, an onion or a vegetable, it will not matter, but I'm just trying to get the broth. And I wanna take out about a cup. 
And the reason why we're doing this is because we wanna have the fat in with this liquid when we pour our flour in. It's gonna help um, prevent lumps. So probably about maybe a cup and a half to two cups. And now it's really hot, so it's pretty hot to touch. So that's when we're gonna add in our liquid that has not been heated. So maybe at like a half of a cup there. And we pour in our remaining flour. You don't have to worry about doing it in stages or anything. Just go ahead and pour the whole thing in. Put your lid on. Now you could do this in any container you like, but I found a canning jar was pretty easy to do. And then just shake it up. Now, if it's hot, because it is kind of hot, you could wrap something around, like you know, a towel or something like that, and then shake it that way until it's all incorporated. lumps. Oh, there are a couple lumps in there actually that were hiding from me. So I probably need to shake it just a little bit more. I'm going to break some of these up. There we go. And I'll just give it another couple of shakes and then we'll pour it in. Because we don't want lumps in our beef stew. That is for sure. And if you were concerned about that, you could certainly put this through um, a kind of a sieve if you wanted to, like a strainer. But I'm just going to give it some more shakes here. All gone, no lumps, and we're just gonna pour that in. And give it a stir. Now, while I finish making the uh, biscuit batter, what I'm gonna do is just put this on a simmer. But you can see it's starting to already thicken up. It's almost immediate. And that looks like a really good um, amount of sauce in there, or liquid, so I'm not going to add any more of the beef stock. But if you wanted to have it a little bit, um, you know, stockier and not as thick, you could certainly add some more in. It's no problem whatsoever. So I'm going to go to the sear saute, and we're going to take the temperature, though, down, because I don't want this to be on a full boil. I'm going to do low, medium, and hit start, and then finish making these biscuits up. So I've got my butter and my flour kind of just coarsely um, put in there. And I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of sour cream. I know that's unusual. Remember, I'm just winging this up. Winging this as I go, I have no idea. I use yogurt in my other um, recipe, so I thought, well, let's try sour cream. I didn't have any yogurt. All right, this is a half of a tablespoon of baking powder. We're gonna use a pinch of salt, maybe a quarter teaspoon, and a quarter cup of water, which I might need more than that, I'm not sure. And let's do about half of a tablespoon of sugar. That should be fine. And that's totally optional. You don't need to do that. All right, so what I understand from a drop biscuit um, is that the dough is a little bit thinner than a rolled biscuit, so or a cut biscuit, however you want to call them. So let's just see. Because the idea is that you just drop these, and they bake up. And they're really good. Probably not as flaky. This looks like I'm going to need a little bit more water or liquid or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Get a little refill. All right, so I'm going to grab another quarter cup of water here, and I'm only going to put in about a tablespoon at a time. You don't want to add it all in. Whenever you're making bread products, it's always good to add in a little bit of the liquid at a time, because otherwise you can add too much, and then it's you're chasing it. So you're, you add too much liquid, and then you end up having to add more flour. And see, that's exactly what I did here. Now, I'm not going to worry about changing it. Um, I think they're going to be fine. It's a nice wet dough. But really, that was all I needed, that little bit of extra. If I would have poured that whole thing in there, we would have had a soupy mess. All right, so now I've been thinking about this and how to go about doing these drop biscuits on top. Obviously, I'm going to use the um, air crisper lid. And so I grabbed a bunch of different things. Now, I think this would work if you put the rack in and put this pan down. But... I kind of want it to be a little bit lower than that because I want the biscuits, you know, they're going to rise up some. There's some baking powder in there. So then I thought, well, maybe I could do it with this and maybe the crisper pan. And if all else fails, I'm going to make a little sling of foil and just 
set my pan right on top of the stew, which might be the way I go. Because this is going to become totally messy. So you know what? That's what I'm going to do. So now I know a lot of people are not a big fan of foil. You could probably use parchment or something else, but I think just to make this easy, I'm going to use some foil. And I'm going to take it here. All I need is to have a place for my pan to kind of sit and a little elevated above. And the lid has to go down. So I'm gonna just kind of make this, try to get it even so my pan is even. And I don't want my pan touching the liquid down there. Let's see if that will work without it getting liquidy. I think that's gonna work. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. It's a little cro crooked, but that's okay. Now, as long as the lid goes down and we can still air crisp, I think that's gonna work. So that's a little shortcut, kind of cool. Now this time I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about preheating. I usually do, but I'm not gonna worry about it. We just want to get these biscuits done. Since this is us just kind of having some fun here today and seeing if we can push the limits with the Ninja Foodie. So let's see. So I'm gonna drop one here. They look good. I mean, they look good. Drop one there. I don't know how many will all fit on this pan here, but I'm gonna try. Drop one there. I hope they're not too big, and I hope they're not gonna, I might need to lower that side a little bit. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let's see, we've got, what, five? Hey, look at this. If we put one right in the middle, it doesn't matter if they go together, does it? Nah, we're all friends, right? So if they, Mesh together and I have to pull them apart, no big deal. But I am gonna drop this side just a little bit. I want it to go down. I want it to be as far away from that element as I can so that it has room to puff up. All right, so let's go to the, oh, what function do we wanna do? Hmm, you know what, let's go with the broil and let's hit start. I know that's kind of an odd choice, but um, you know it'll get the hottest, the quickest, so I think that's what I'm gonna do here. Let's just go with that broil, and I have no idea how long it's gonna take. Less than 10 minutes, though, I'm guessing. So I'll just keep an eye on them, and when they look like they're done in the middle and brown on the top, we'll be good to go, and we'll plate up, and we'll eat our beef stew and biscuits. So I checked on the biscuits at about the four minute mark and they still needed to go longer. And then I checked it again a couple minutes later and still needed to go a little bit longer. But I think we're probably about done. That's about eight minutes. Now keep in mind, these biscuits don't get really tall, which is good. They kind of spread a little bit um, and that helps keep them away from that heating element so they don't get too done on the top or touch it and make a mess. Now I hope they're done on the inside. We don't know until we try because I've never made this before. So I also need to figure out how I'm gonna get this out without making a mess. I usually use some gloves that give me really good dexterity, but unfortunately they are dirty. So I'm trying to use these little mitts. And that worked fine. I got a little beef stew on the bottom, but that's all right. So there we go. We have our drop biscuits to serve with our stew. And let me, to be fair here, because it's always the center one that doesn't get as done as the others. Let me go ahead and take that one, and that'll be my taste test, so I can tell you guys if it did get done or not. I'm just gonna try to move this over. Where can I move it? Let me let me move it over here. I, I know I'm gonna have to clean that, but at least it won't be in our way while we do the taste test. Okay, so let's get out our stew. Now that extra 10 minutes of, or actually I think it was eight minutes, look how thick and luxurious the stew looks. Oh, and it smells amazing. So I'm super excited. Look at that, oh my gosh. That looks perfect. All right, the meat looks perfect. It is nice and brown. Oh, it is tender falling apart. I think I need to let this cool down a little bit. So let's let it cool down just a little bit and then I'm gonna take this little bit of meat here with an onion. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. Wow, this is good. I really recommend trying it with the wine. And when you add wine to food, 
Use a dry red, I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning, I used a Cabernet. So use a dry red that you would enjoy drinking. If you absolutely don't like wine, then just don't use it. Use all beef stock, you'll be fine. Mm. The carrots are perfectly cooked. Let's grab a potato here. Oh my goodness. Perfect texture on everything. Oh, I forgot about a mushroom. Let me grab one of those. Oh, I just love this beef stew. Mmm, so good. One more piece of meat, and then let's dig into that biscuit. Oh my goodness. This is a winner for sure. Oh, I love it. So tender, perfectly cooked, and it has a delicious flavor. All right, let's check out our biscuit. So it's a little kind of doughy on the underside, but it is cooked all the way through, and it is light and fluffy. Um, I like the exterior up here. I think it actually could have gone the full 10 minutes. It tastes good though. Yeah, I think I would have liked to go the, uh, the full 10 minutes, just to get that bottom maybe a little bit more done. Now keep in mind, because it's sitting on top of a full pot of liquid, it's not really gonna get any air circulation, so it's not really gonna crisp up on the bottom, but it still tastes good. Mmm. That's how you eat a biscuit with beef stew. Dip it right on in there, no butter, no nothing. Mmm, delicious. All right, I hope you guys give this one a try. I hope you love it like I do. You know, as always, change up the seasonings, you know, omit the wine, add the wine, add more wine, whatever you want, make it yours, make it delicious, and enjoy the recipe.